Hi, uh, welcome to this uh, new video in the uh, video series on web forms. In this video, we're going to look at special text inputs, and more specifically, we're going to again utilize the input tag, but then with uh, using the attributes of type email and type password. Moreover, we're going to see two important attributes uh, which have been introduced, uh, newly introduced with HTML5, that is the placeholder attribute and the require attribute that uh, um, make the uh, work of a web developer uh, much easier when it comes to forms. But uh, before we do that, uh, as always, we're going to shortly recall uh, what we did in the previous video, and that was uh, looking at the single value select by using the select and option tags. And the solution to the previous assignment, where the previous assignment was asking you to make the previous select this code right here to have an additional first option empty. And this can be done uh, by looking here at this uh, row. So we added an option tag with uh, nothing in between the opening and closing tag and with an empty value. Now, making the previous select to have the last option chosen when the page loads can be done by adding, adding the attribute selected in this last option tag right here and changing the values uh, of the options to numerals. As you can see here, we previously had values of uh, text and now we uh, have actually changed those into num numerals. So if somebody, if our user now chooses the first country, so the Netherlands, the value that is going to be returned and we're going to see uh, uh, in the future videos how we're going to utilize it will be one. If our user chooses as a country Belgium, the value which the form is going to return is two. And if the user chooses uh, as country Germany, the value that the form is going to return is uh, three. Now, the second part of the uh, assignment was asking you to make a, uh, a form field in which the user can select several values by again using the select tag. And that can be done actually quite easily by just adding a single attribute that is the multiple attribute right here on the uh, select tag. And this is the result for this case where you can see by holding, by clicking uh, and holding the control button, uh, you can actually then uh, click uh, with left click and choose uh, more than one countries. But as uh, aforementioned, the, uh, this video uh, deals with special text inputs and more specifically uh, the uh, of type email and uh, type password. So let's see where we uh, this is where we left our form and this is how it looks like and a, a common thing uh, that is uh, requested in uh, almost every form is a login right how many times have we uh, actually filled out uh, logins for for web forms so uh, and usually nowadays uh, what is requested uh, from a login is uh, to uh, use your email address. Well, fortunately, uh, HTML5 now uh, has a special type of the input tag. That's the type uh, email. And we're going to uh, utilize that uh, in order for our login. So again, we're going to use the uh, name. As we mentioned, this is always necessary. So the name attribute. Uh, which is we're going to use something descriptive. So since we're going to use it, use uh, the email as login, we the value for the name attribute will be login. The same value uh, will be for ID here. Uh, just need to mention that this could be anything, right? And doesn't have to match uh, the name attribute. This could be anything else. Nevertheless, uh, since I want it to be descriptive and, and uh, be consistent, I'm going to uh, uh, choose as value uh, also login. So uh, let's see what happens if we save the file and move back to the browser. I'm going to refresh the page. And here, as you can see, is our uh, uh, field, our form field to, uh, exp that expects the, the, the login from a user. 
Now, uh, again, as you can see that this is not very descriptive, so we're going to use as known the uh, label attribute. Now, so I'm going to just also paste this, save the file, and move back to the browser, and here is our label. If I click the label, you see that this field now uh, becomes focused. Now, another common thing that is seen nowadays uh, in uh, web forms is, uh, which has been introduced again with um, HTML5, is some uh, feed forward information of what is expected uh, from the user uh, when it comes to the login. So as you can see here, as a user, I see that I need to insert a login, but I do not know what that uh, what is expected from me is to actually insert my email. Therefore, we have the HTML5 has introduced a placeholder attribute where we can actually feed forward some information uh, to the user on, on what is it that is expected from uh, him or her. So in this case, we want the user to insert your email as login. So we just insert this as a value to the placeholder attribute. I'm just going to save the file and refresh the page. And as you can see here, that's, some, uh, that's a great you know, user uh, experience feature from HTML5 where we get some information on what it is that it is expected uh, from me as a user to insert here. Well, um, uh, to improve again the uh, presentation of this field, I'm going to use the div attribute. And if I would save the page and refresh it, you see that now this uh, submit button uh, went below. Now, uh, finally, since uh, there's always a, a password uh, that is needed, I'm also uh, going to uh, copy paste this uh, div tag and then edit the information in order to uh, include a password. So I'm going to use a shorter term right here. I'm going to remove the placeholder. change the name attributes and then choose a different obviously type that is of password so this is how you could construct an input type password i'm going to save the html file and refresh it on the browser and as you can see here that if i type something it's what you would actually expect from the uh, password field now, this essentially uh, concludes our video where we looked at the input type email and password and the two attributes, the placeholder, which helps us to feed forward information to the user in order to make a, a, a better experience when filling out a form. And uh, well, I forgot to mention the required attributes, but this is very easy. So by uh, actually including a, a, the attribute required, say on the password because we always require the password but say we also do that for the login so i'm also gonna include the required attributes from the login to the login and then refresh our web page what you can see is if i if i try to submit uh, the form i get this message from the browser so i need to actually insert something and as you can see that if I don't insert a proper email, well, the message is in Dutch, but uh, if you have a, a browser, an English browser, you're going to receive a, a message uh, that actually states that you need to use an ad symbol in the email address. So that's what I'm going to do. And if I try to uh, submit the form again, uh, the browser is going to remind me that I need to actually fill this uh, data in. Now, the assignment uh, for this uh, time uh, asks you to look at the information on the input tag at this URL and make the password field to limit the user in inserting not more than 10 characters. And also provide your user some feed-forward information about your expectations for user inputs 
of the password field. Uh, and again, as always, we're going to look, uh, we're going to review the uh, solution to this assignment in the following video. And the following video actually uh, looks uh, at uh, multiple value inputs, uh, known as also uh, widely known as checkboxes. And that we're going to do by again using the input tag, but now uh, with type uh, checkbox. And that's going to be a useful uh, resource. Uh, for that video, but uh, till, uh, till the next video.